Welcome and thanks for joining us again. <clears throat> um, we're on our road to Pentecost and uh, we've only got a couple of weeks to go before we come to the day of Pentecost. So I'd like to just think about and reflect upon the concept of waiting on God. Uh, waiting can be very hard, even painful. And the disciples, we read, were told to wait uh, for, the Holy, for the gift of the Holy Spirit, which had been promised. Now, I'm sure that some of them would have liked to have raced off and uh, told everybody that Jesus has risen, that Jesus was alive. I can be like that sometimes. But they obeyed and they waited. Now, the word for wait in Hebrew, I think it's pronounced tikvah, as, uh, it's not just about sitting there placidly doing nothing. Uh, it's a little bit more concrete. In Hebrew, the word means expectation. It also means as the reference to cord or rope, which comes from a root word that means to bind or to wait upon. So to wait on God is to put our hope in God. There's a number of words for waiting in Hebrew and also in Greek. Uh, there's the word also, obviously for just sitting there and uh, doing nothing like we just say to a dog, stay. <coughs> uh, but there are a number of words that are a lot more active. And there's a sense of waiting with an anticipation. Um, are looking for something. So waiting for God for the Hebrew people, they were in a sense of anticipation, full of hope and willing to endure until God should come or God should act. I've often thought about the Jewish people that were held in the concentration camps during the Second World War. Um, and this was some of the most horrific persecution and conditions we can imagine. How did they cope? How did they endure? There was nothing they could do. They simply could sit, just be there and hope and wait that God had not forgotten them. Um, the, the Victor Frankl, who himself was a was held in one of the concentration camps at that time. He was a psychiatrist, and he read, wrote a little book called Man's Search for Meaning. And in it, he re reflects on this observation that those people who had a sense of faith and hope in that situation coped much better. Now, of course, not everybody survived. That was not in their control. but. What he found was those who had a sense of uh, faith and hope while in that condition, whether it be faith in God or people uh, outside who are waiting for them, they long to see, they coped better emotionally and psychologically. And of course, not all of them survived, but their mental health was, was um, a lot better. Many people committed suicides or just waited to die. When God calls his people to wait, it's in that active sense of waiting for God. So to wait for God is to set one's hope in him. In Isaiah 40 verse 31, uh, the verse is often translated in two ways. One version says, those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. Another version says, those who hope in the Lord will renew their sense. That's because the word has both meaning. So it's the waiting with a sense of anticipation that God will actually provide what we need. And this sense of hope and waiting, of course, is also is relevant for us today, this side of uh, Pentecost. 
As Paul says in Romans 8, 22 to 23, he says, We know that the whole of creation is groaning, as in the, the pains of childbirth, uh, right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, our redemption for our bodies. <clears throat> and we note as we read throughout the Bible that m many of the prophets and leaders of the Old Testament had to wait long periods. Uh, Abraham is an example of that. He was just sent. Um, not even knowing where he was going, and God had sent him to the promise to a promised land. Moses was uh, uh, saved and rescued, uh, and he grew up in Egypt. He had a passion to help his people. And one day, in an impatient passion, he uh, saw one of his fellow uh, Hebrews being beaten and tried to help him killing the slave driver or the the guard which sent him into exile for 40 years and I can imagine in that time him waiting and wondering when is God going to call me back and then he met God in the burning bush as we remember so then God delivered the people of Israel out of Egypt and then Moses led the people towards the promised land and they wandered for 40 years 40 years uh, towards a place that they should have got to in about a month um, ge geographically so what was this waiting part all about there's a there's an important uh, thing we talked about uh, previously about being prepared for the promise of the Holy Spirit and how God prepares us inwardly that he's uh, not just working on the ex external circumstances but he's preparing us for what he's promised there's an old saying an old phrase it's become a bit of a cliche I know but I think there's still important truth and it was simply this that while God got the he, it, the people out of Egypt it took 40 years to get Egypt out of the people he was preparing them for the promised land even King David can think of the life of King David he was um, noted by the prophet Samuel identified and anointed as as ki the king of Israel even as a shepherd boy but it took many years before David actually became the king. And in that time, he had many experiences. Uh, and David learned about patience and about waiting. And David write, writes in the Psalms, verse, uh, Psalm 40, he says, I waited patiently for the Lord and he heard my cry. And he says in Psalm 25, None that wait in on thee, O Lord, will be ashamed. The other important thing to reflect on is that our concept of time is vastly different from God's. God is beyond time. He's timeless. In the Gospel of John, Jesus says the phrase, Before Abraham was, I am. Now, firstly, in saying this, he's identifying with the name that the Lord gave Moses at the burning bush, the I Am. So he's identifying with God. But also the term I Am points to the timeless nature of God. It's not the God who was or the God that always will be, but that simple phrase I Am puts God and Jesus beyond the confines or the boundaries of time. And then in Peter, in his second letter, says, But do not forget this one thing, dear friends, that the Lord 
with the Lord a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day. And that, that also is a quote from the psalm, Psalm 90. And there's two words in the Greek for time. There is um, chronos, from what we get the term chronology, and that's time measured in days uh, and weeks and months. And that's about the sun, uh, uh, right, or the earth revolving around the sun and, and the time, days and the seas, the days and the weeks and the time, chronological time. The other word is kairos, which is about seasons. Kairos uh, isn't measured in days or hours. It's about when the situation is ripe or in an agricultural context, when the harvest is rise, ripe. So, our uh, farmers today have worked it out that by a certain time of year they, they can start harvesting, providing they've had the rain. So it will depend on the context and the weather. So it's not about saying on oh, the particular day or time it will be right, but when the conditions are right. That's Kairos time. We previously looked at the, t the uh, significance of the Feast of Pentecost, which was also known as the Feast of the Harvest or the, f the Feast of the First Fruits. So the disciples waiting for the, the Feast of Pentecost was a very much a reminder and identification of the seasonal nature of God. That it wasn't just a matter of saying, well, here it is, go off and run with it. But when the time is right, and uh, we'll talk a bit more about this on the day of Pentecost, because the, what they experienced was the first fruits of the great harvest of the Christian faith. So it was a seasonal celebration. Uh, celebrating when the, the time was ripe. <clears throat> we also noted earlier that waiting can be a very pain, painful and difficult experience, especially when you're under persecution. The disciples knew this, and as we noted, those people in the concentration camps but there's another point that um, uh, we need to consider in our concept of waiting on God. So there's the waiting, there's a sense of hope and faith in God. But there's also about being in the position, being in a, a spiritual, emotional, and sometimes even a, a physical place to receive God. I remember some years ago, uh, I was with my family in Los Angeles in America, and I had to get from one place back to the, the hotel where the, my Jan and the kids were staying. And I was waiting for a bus. There I was sitting at the bus stop, and eventually the bus came. But to my shock and horror, it was going in the opposite direction. I was sitting on the wrong side of the road because, of course, their traffic uh, flows differently. Uh, I was patiently waiting, but in the wrong place. So I had to cross the road and patiently wait again for the next bus to come going in the right direction. Uh, we talked earlier about when we're preparing, when God prepares us to receive the Holy Spirit, that there are various conditions one of them in our place of waiting is our place of waiting. And I don't mean necessarily physically, it may be, but what is, what's our general attitude? What's our, our sort of mental framework? Uh, how we wait? Are we waiting in hope? Are we waiting in fear? Um, so what's our, what, are, what place are we in as we wait? Today, of course, we are waiting for the this return of Jesus. And the and Jude 
in the New Testament gives us some encouragement. In Jude 17 onwards he says, But dear friends, remember that the apostles of our Lord Jesus foretold that in the last times there will be scoffers who will follow their own godless desires. These are the people who will divide you, who follow mere natural instincts and do not have the spirit. But you, dear friends, build yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you eternal life. To wait in hope, wait in faith and be in the place of God's love. Thanks for listening and may God bless you with a really great week ahead. And now I'd like you to get with a couple of other people and consider these three questions. And hopefully we'll have it on a PowerPoint for you. How patient are you? How do you handle having to wait for something or someone? Can you think of a time when you ask God for help but you had to wait a long time. What was it like? What, ha what helped you during that time? And thirdly, what does the connection between waiting and hope, or how does the, the connection between waiting and hope help you in times of difficulty? God bless you.